In this lesson, we're going to learn how to create a discussion forum. So let's go ahead and click on turn editing on. And then we're going to scroll down to the section of our course where we want to add the discussion forum. And we're going to go right over here and we're going to click on add an activity or resource. We're going to click on forum. And now we're going to go ahead and populate the information for our discussion forum. So we're going to go ahead and give the forum a title. I'm going to call this discussion one personal accounting. And the next thing that we're going to do right here in the description is actually put in the instructions for the discussion. So I've got some instructions that I'm going to add here that I'm copying from another document that I have. And in my particular courses, uh, my students are required to post a minimum of four times per discussion. So I will typically post a prompt question which the students have to respond to and after they do that they will be permitted to see the postings by their classmates and they will have to pick any three classmates that they want to respond to so that way there's an engagement between the instructor and the students and the students and the students as well so you've got peer-to-peer -peer learning as well going on and I do have some additional requirements for example students have to post a minimum of a hundred words so um, that's something that they have to do. Otherwise, they really don't get credit for uh, participating. Um, in addition to the written instructions that I typically like to post over here, especially for the first discussion, uh, if students are new to Moodle and they're not familiar with how to go about participating or posting to a discussion, what I like to do is add a um, instructional video at the very bottom here, a tutorial that shows them how to go ahead and post to the discussion forum. Now, I've already got a video that I created a while ago that is on YouTube. So what we're going to do here is basically add that video. So we're going to click on insert an audio or video file. We're going to click on video. And this is a similar process to the previous lesson that we covered. We're going to go ahead and put that link. Under display options, we will go over here. And for the size, I'm probably going to go with 800 by 600 pixels. And just go ahead and insert media. I'm going to select that and I'm going to go ahead and center that video right there. So now we've got the instructions for discussion one and a video tutorial that basically walks the students in terms of how to go about posting. We're going to scroll down to the bottom here. We're going to talk about the forum type. Now there, there are several options over here. You can do a single simple discussion. Each person can post one time. You can do a Q&A forum, a standard forum. And if you're not sure what these are, if you click on the little icon over here for the question mark, it basically explains what the different options are. In my particular case, we are going to be looking at the Q&A forum. And the reason that we're going to do that is, as you can see in the description, students must first post their perspective before viewing other students' posts. In my particular case, it's critical because I'm setting up the forum, the discussion forum, so that students can read my prompt, respond to it first before they get to see what their classmates are replying or responding to my prompt. And that way I'm getting a more genuine response from the students and they haven't had an opportunity to, uh, you know, perhaps borrow ideas from their classmates. Um, so the first posting is a genuine post from the students and then the second, third and fourth is basically their responses to their peers' answers to the discussion prompt. So we're going to go with Q&A form. Availability, if your discussion forums have deadlines, then you can go ahead and select the date. Um, I typically have a uh, one week turnaround for my discussions, so let's go ahead and enable that deadline. So we're gonna change this to the 11th, so that would give us seven days. And attachments and word count, this is important uh, because if your discussion prompts require students to attach an image or a graph or anything like that, then you do want to give them the capability of putting an attachment, but you might want to you know, specify what the size limit is, especially if your school servers have limited capacity. In my particular case, I don't want any attachments because my discussions don't require any attachments. So I'm going to go ahead and set that to zero attachments. And for display word count, this I'm going to change to yes, because as you recall from my instructions up here, I do have a, a word count limit. So I do have a minimum of one, 100 words that students need to post for each discussion. So the display word count is going to be set to yes.
Subscription and tracking, that's the next option. Um, optional basically means that students um, can opt out of receiving a notification when anyone posts to the discussion forum. I like to keep my students engaged. So um, um, I've, uh, in the past, I've either done a forced subscription, which means that everybody's going to get notified and receive the um, uh, notification of a posting. Um, or you can set this to optional. Um, um, this gives the students a chance to basically not receive those notifications. So this is entirely up to you in terms of how you want to set this up. Um, I'm going to leave this as optional right now. Discussion locking is an option that allows you to lock a discussion after a period of inactivity. Since my discussions have a one week deadline, I am going to go ahead and uh, basically um, lock it after two weeks just to give a bit of a buffer. We're going to leave the uh, threshold open, whole grading form. Okay. So in terms of grading, uh, you can basically assign a scale, so a letter grade to your discussion. But in my particular courses, I use points. So I'm going to change this to points and um, I'm going to change this to a maximum of 10 points per discussion. So it's going to be 10 points. And we're going to use a simple grading format. We're not going to be using a rubric or marking guide at this point. For the grade category, I want this to be categorized under discussions, but it looks like I forgot to create a discussions category when I was doing that in the grade book. So we're going to go ahead and take care of that right now. We're going to go over here to grades. I am going to right click, select open a new tab. So this creates a new tab over here to the grade book. We're going to go to setup, click on that, scroll to the bottom of the page and click on add category. We're going to call this discussions save changes and we're done we can go ahead and close this tab and refresh this right here go back to whole form grading and i'm going to go to great category and discussions should be right there a default setting to notify students we're going to leave this as no and and that's about it for activity completion i am going to go ahead and um, leave this as is. Students can self-monitor how they're doing and check off the activity comp completion block if they choose to. We're going to scroll down now to save and return. Now we're going to scroll down to the bottom of the course page and look and see where we basically created a discussion forum. Now all we did at this point is basically create a forum with instructions. We did not actually post a discussion question prompt. So if you click right here, um, you will see once again, and this is what the students will see. We've got the title, we've got the instructions, the video tutorial, and that's pretty much it. What you could do is you can actually tap the question right here in the subject if it's a short question, or what I'm going to do in this particular case is I'm just going to call this discussion question. So that's going to be the subject. And now we are going to post the actual question right here in the message portion. And that's it. We're going to post to form. And we're going to go back to the home page just to see what it looks like. So if we scroll down to the bottom, you will see that we've got a discussion right there called personal accounting. If a student clicks on it, they'll see the instructions, the video tutorial. And if you don't have a video tutorial, you don't have to include one. This is just something that I typically like to provide to my students. And if you scroll to the bottom, you will see that there is a discussion question called personal accounting right there. So what students will see is this. So they're going to need to click on the discussion question, and then they'll have an opportunity to respond to that discussion prompt. And this is how you create a discussion forum.